Hello, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back to the Pursuit of Wealth for an MJ Sector Review. Today's review for Wednesday. It is June 16th today. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing as the topic of the day, the daily bounce getting underway on Oxley. So this came after the bearish news that they were raising 15 million capital raise. And that was at a price of 0.315 per unit for gross proceeds of 15 million. So we'll go over that chart and a trade that I took on it, why we could have entered and how we would have known that we were potentially going to see a bounce from those current levels. So before we jump in, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, we'll run through some news and events on the day, and then we'll look at the Oxy chart in detail. And then we'll look at the rest of the Canadian and the US MJ space. So, MJ MSO Columbia Care to buy Denver based medicine man for 42 million. And we were looking into this and they must be troubled or something like that, the medicine man company, because they had a market cap of about 100 million. So I would say they're more than likely looking for an exit strategy. But nonetheless, the MA train continues. Also, California to infuse money into the legal MJ industry. And majority of that money is going to be provided to Los Angeles. And you can read out that you can read that full article on your own time if you want to learn more about that. But MJ Tech Platform Weed Maps joins NASDAQ with 579 million in fusion. Also, Nova Scotia's regulated MJ prices fell 28% annually. So the average price per gram of adult use MJ in Nova Scotia plunged 28% in the fiscal year ended March 31st, making regulated MJ in the maritime province more competitive than the illicit market, according to Crown Corporation and charge of MJ and alcohol sales. So I found that extremely interesting. Uh, interesting. So also Exocorp participated in the Cantor Fitzgerald virtual LP uh, forum. So that was a fireside chat with Trent McDonald and Sebastian St. Louis, the CEO and the CFO. So that was this morning. I did uh, record, I did record that. So you can check out my channel for that full, for that full fireside chat. It was phenomenal and just love to, I could listen to Sebastian St. Louis speak all day. He really is just a tier one, you know, just a one of a kind CEO. And there's a reason, in my opinion, why he's the only last standing CEO of all the big companies. So moving on to the XLY chart. So again, daily bounce is underway and we've since bounced 25% off of the lows. And I mentioned in our group to members a couple of days ago that I was taking a position and the reason why I was looking at a position in XLY was because of that capital raise at 31 cents and we got as low as 24 cents. So generally we, we see a retracement and when there's a capital raise, we see that whatever the funding, if it's lower than the current prices, we usually gravitate towards that price. But in some cases we see even more downside and Oxley had been, had been bearish before that. So we saw a little bit more downside than what we would normally would expect but we had support there at 23 cents and we got as low as 24 cents. So you could have entered with a playoff support and a stop below 23. You could even allow a little bit more wiggle room and do under 20, uh, 20 cents. But essentially we had pulled back from the high. We had a lack of resistance up until 42 and a half cents. And from that level, we dropped 43%. And as we know, nothing goes straight up forever and nothing goes straight down forever. So we, we would expect a lower high at some point. And because we had that, support at 23 cents because we had pulled back over 42 percent from the recent high and we had a lack of resistance up until 42 and a half cents i was interested in an entry we also had a gap on the chart there at 34 cents so i believe i filled i bought it at 26 so i think i filled at 27 and i did take some off the table just remaining protective right we still have the 10-day moving average the 12 ema to contend with as well and another thing I wanted to point out that it was on the weekly 50 moving average. We have it at 30 cents. So we have some resistance there on the 50 weekly. And we also have the 200 day moving average up at 30.9 cents. So a lot of resistance in that area. Again, I'm still holding a fairly decent chunk of my original position, but just offloading a little bit to de-risk a little bit. So again, watching that 30, 30 cent level as key resistance. If we get over 30 cents, we're likely heading to fill the gap at 34 cents, but this is a long-term entry for me. But again, I entered a, a fairly sizable position there off that 23 cents support. So I was up uh, from about my fill at 27 cents. I was up about 10%. So just locking in and de-risking a little bit, but it looks like we could see more upside, but we need to be cautious of potential daily, daily lower highs here. 
And at this point, we'll zoom into the hourly. And as soon as we lose the hourly uptrend, then our daily lower high will be set. But you can see here that we had a mini high or low, not a clear trend change, I guess, at this point. So you could say that we haven't even really changed the hourly trend at this point with it, as we are lacking a clear pivot point. So at this point, still not 100% convinced, but it has been a great bounce nonetheless. And you can see that the hourly RSI was getting crushed here down in the 15 level area. So we knew a bounce was coming eventually and we had been rejecting at the EMA 12 here on the hourly. So as soon as we got over that as well, that was the go signal. And then we had that EMA 12 and 26 bull cross. But at this point, not 100% convinced that our, our daily bottom is in just yet because we haven't had a clear hourly trend change and we'll want to lose the low of today tomorrow to start daily consolidation. Otherwise, the daily bounce continues and we could be heading up to, like I said, that 30 cent and 34 cent area. So congrats to the bulls on XLY. That was the leader in uh, in the watch list for the Canadian space today on my watch list. So followed by XLY was RIV XTRX. And on the bear list, we had PWR, T God, and North. And I actually unloaded my North as well on that recent push up to 19 cents, sold it and bought some Hexo. And uh, we, we're not seeing a huge discount right now like we did with Zenibus. You know, Zenibus at one point was 20, 30% discount buying it versus, versus Hexo. But again, North being a low cap name and you know, just not that much interest, uh, not surprising, but we could see an EMA 12 and 26 bear cross here as well and a lack of support down to 14 and a half cents. So just checking in on some of our major names. So CGC daily consolidation today, but we did manage to, so we had support here at 2409 and we managed to close above it. And just taking a look at some of our other major LPs. So Cron held the 26 daily EMA and taking a look at ACB. So ACB didn't even lose it and still closed above it. So ACB has been strong as of late and Hexo uh, sitting at 596 here after hours. We did have support at 564. So I've been saying for a while now that in my swing account, I will look to unload a little bit here as my average is a lot lower in my long-term account. So I'm not touching that one, but in my swing account, I will just you know take some off the table if we lose 564. If we lose 564, then we, we break this weekly equilibrium bearish. So we have the low high, higher low, double top, now scouting a higher low compared to 564. If we lose 564, we're going to be heading down to 502. And at that point, that would mean that the weekly downtrends, you know, is still intact at this point. But if we break 755 from here, that will confirm a weekly uptrend. And we also have an inverted head and shoulders pattern to be watching. So if we hold that 564 or 550 area, then it's still a possible inverse head and shoulders. And that comes off of the failed cup and handle here on the daily, just leading into their earnings. But we did see the EMA 12 and 26 bear cross today. So it's entirely possible that we could see a bounce. And with the high of the day being at 596, we're currently testing that here after hours. So if we get over 596, then the daily bounce will be underway. We also have a gap here at 649. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a lottery ticket type. <laughs> entry here if you're targeting that 649, but uh, it, it is pretty high risk, high reward at the moment, especially with the S&P 500 being weak. I did do a video on the broader market there if you wanna check that out, but essentially had uh, some bearish news from the feds saying that they expect possible a possibility of two rate hikes in 2023 and a jump in inflation. So we're going to be monitoring the overall broader market, but we'll be watching to see whether or not the high of the day today at 596 breaks tomorrow. And again, just going to be watching this like a hawk, this weekly equilibrium and this inverted head and shoulders that we could see follow through. So SNDL today lost $1 and I was looking to make another entry, but based on everything that I've seen so far, I'm, I'm just a little reluctant, especially with SNDL. I had a great trade back here uh, averaging down. I had about an average of 90 cents and I exited here on this scaled out into strength and I pretty much exited all of my position around the one in the high 130s, uh, around 140. And like I said, just haven't re-entered yet, but again, I'm not a big fan of SNDL. I seen a, you know, I seen that opportunity for um, that entry off of 65 cents. We had support at 49 cents as well, but again, just 
not 100% convinced that SNDL is going to make it long term. Uh, but if you were looking for an entry sub $1, I had said for a while that I expected this this uh, the stock to test that $1 area so that if you were looking for bullish entries, that would be the area to target. So taking a look at Tilray, Tilray closed right on EMA 26 at 1811, closed at 1813, sitting at 1814 here after hours. But we knew, again, it's just a matter of time before we see weekly consolidation. And here we are starting weekly consolidation already and we'll look for a higher low compared to 1341. If we can form a higher low compared to 1341, then break above the recent high at 2304, that would confirm a weekly uptrend and a lot of names working on weekly uptrends so that we can set our monthly higher lows and get our monthly bottom set. But we did hold the 10 month moving average and we're holding the EMA 12 here on Tilray as well. So moving on to the US space, so MSOS, extremely bearish the last few days and we did have support there at 3826 we lost it but we did close above it so we got as low today as 3819 and then we have the key support at 3756 so just want to highlight similar to hexo except for hexo at a double top but with msos we had the low high higher low lower high scouting a higher low bear break but didn't see much follow through so we're going to you know just kind of take it with a grain of salt at the moment so all about the low of the day today at 38.19. We absolutely have to hold that into tomorrow and the rest of the week or else we, we break out of this weekly equilibrium bearish and then we're likely heading down to 37.56. And if we lose 37.56, then the weekly downtrend remains, but going to want to see a close uh, by the end of this week over EMA 26, which is sitting at 39.33. So to remain extremely bullish on the on the uh, MSOS chart, we'd like to see a weekly close above EMA 26. So on the bull and bear list, we had BioHarvest, CWeb, and KHRN. On the bull list, we had TAUG, FLGC, and MMEN. Also, BAM was pulling back today. So just working on a daily higher low and a daily trend change and held EMA 12 on that pullback. So key support at 38 cents, and we have resistance at 48 and a half. So if we can form this higher low and break above 48 and a half cents, that would confirm a daily uptrend. And at this point, it's a daily bull flag on watch. All right, going to end it there. Thanks so much for joining us on the Pursuit of Wall for another MJ Sector review. And make sure to smash the like, subscribe to the channel on your way out. Tick the bell, you'll be notified when I go up, when I upload a, another video. And we shall see you tomorrow after market close. Take care, everyone.